For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $2,300. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I just released a video on panoptic segmentation that Andre Carpathy actually thought was a good explainer video. So if you haven't watched that yet, what are you doing? <laughs> Should definitely go watch that one. I'll put a link to it in the description and actually put a card up here someplace. Anyway, at the same time that I was working on releasing that, the full self-driving beta 10.6 release notes came out. And as is becoming sort of a habit, I'm going to do a quick video explaining to the best of my knowledge, of course, some of this stuff is a little bit guesswork because I'm not exactly sure what they're talking about but anyway I'll try to identify that where that comes up but anyway I wanted to do a, an explainer about this just FYI I do not have 10.6 yet I usually get it somewhere around 24 hours after the first people so I expect I'll probably get it sometime tomorrow ish um, I'm also going skydiving tomorrow and I'm going to do an episode about that because I'm going to talk about how parachutes work and everything. So I'm going to branch out into more of the Veritasium uh, level of things. So anyway, <laughs> wish me luck. Hopefully I will survive the trip and I'll be able to talk about it. But anyway, for today, I want to talk about full self-driving beta 10.6 release notes. There are some really cool, much needed improvements in my mind at least. Uh, so just starting at the top, might as well start at the top. Improved object detection network architecture for non-VR use, e.g. cars, trucks, buses, 7% higher, 16% lower depth error, and 21% lower velocity error for crossing vehicles. So improved object detection network for non-VR use. So if you remember the last couple of versions, I think... 10.3 maybe also, but definitely 10.4 and 10.5, there have been specific updates for VRUs, which are pedestrians and uh, cyclists and people on motorcycles, etc. So it looks like what they're doing is they're turning now and they're working on some non-VRUs instead, which would be like trucks, buses, etc., things like that. So anyway, 7% higher recall means fewer false negatives. So if you remember, precision basically has to do with fewer false positives and recall has to do with fewer false negatives. So false negatives are bad in this case. You don't want to not detect an object that's around you, right? So you don't want to drive past past a car and have the computer not see the car. That would be a bad mistake. So 7% higher recall is really, really good. 16% uh, lower depth error is also cool. What that means is, I'll do it vertically. <laughs> You'd be driving on the road, but if you're here, you need to know where this other car is, how far away it is from you, or sideways like this, it could also be like this. So anyway, 16% lower depth error means that you've reduced the error. So it might be from here to here, right? So the car's estimating where this other car is and you're reducing that error. And you know, certainly as you're driving close behind other cars, remember that currently full self-driving beta and I think all the cars that have the vision stack right now are, are kept at two car lengths behind at highway speeds right now and that partially is because they don't have good enough good enough depth error to really maintain that really really close follow distance that you need for high density traffic driving on the highways anyway so you've got that and you've got 21 percent lower velocity error for crossing vehicles which of course if your car is here that would be cars that go like this so it's it's understanding that better and 21% lower actually matters because that means you can pull out as somebody's going by, you can pull out more quickly. It also means if you see them coming, you know whether or not you can pull out in front of them. So that actually matters a whole bunch too. The second item here is new visibility network with 18.5% less mean relative error. So this is something where I'm guessing a little bit. Um, I don't know exactly what they mean by visibility network, but I assume that that means something about seeing <laughs> the world around you. So they've redone the stack to some extent. If you remember Andre Carpathy's and, and also uh, Tesla's AI day, there's a whole bunch of people talked about this. Anyway, I'll link that up in the cards up above, but so you can see that in more detail. But essentially they're using multi-headed transformers, hydronets as they call them, and it sounds like what they've done is they, the, the visibility stack is actually, the visibility network is kind of foundational to all of this stuff. And that's one of the reasons why you should watch my um, panoptic segmentation episode because it actually has to do with visibility networks. If you don't see things in the world, you can't act upon them. So that's the important part of this. So anyway, it sounds like they've changed one of these or more of these networks 
to reduce the relative error in just general things like you know just seeing the world around you so if you imagine like <laughs> no glasses glasses right you put the glasses on you have an 18 percent better visibility so that would be a human level comparison of that i guess all right the next one is general static object network with 17 percent precision improvements in high curvature and nighttime cases so i think this is actually going to be rather important <clears throat> that is that we have a static object detection, which is not moving things, but things like parked cars, sides of the road, garbage cans, mailboxes, whatever you're driving past. And also, of course, roads that curve uh, aggressively, perhaps. So a winding road at night or winding or just at night, period. But anyway, um, the, the static object network. So this is, again, this is a new network. So this is something different than they had. And it's got an improvement of 17% precision improvement, which means... 17% fewer false positives. So false positives, again, very important. You don't want it detecting a, a garbage can or an edge of the road or something like that where it's not actually there. So that's actually going to be really important and probably should make the turns at nighttime, especially they can be really, really janky at night. They kind of go like, eh, 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 like that. And so hopefully what that'll do is that'll smooth out turns in high curvature areas or turning at night. I noticed that a lot doing left-hand turns at night that it's tends to be pretty jerky so hopefully that will improve that as well like i said i don't have this yet but of course i will do a drive as soon as i do and i will post that as well all right the next one is improved stopping position at unprotected left turns while yielding to oncoming objects using object prediction beyond the crossing point the last part i'm not exactly sure what that means but i'm going to take a guess at it but i definitely know that i in my neighborhood in particular have a stop sign and then the actual line where you're supposed to stop is past that and the car is always stopping at the stop sign instead of going up to the place where it's supposed to and i think some of that is that it doesn't have a good sense of what the crossing traffic is so i'm hoping that this is actually going to fix that very specific instance of problematic you know behavior that i have so anyway unprotected left hand turn so stop stop signs right or at a light like a, a just a regular light but it doesn't have a left turn arrow so basically it needs to understand where it can actually go to in order to not get hit by cars that are crossing right so while yielding to oncoming objects so things are coming at you or they're crossing or doing whatever they're doing it's got to look beyond where it was i guess you know <laughs> using object predictions beyond the crossing point i think just basically means that it's looking further afield it's not just looking pretty close by so it's starting to look out there and it's starting to say like well it, you know here's one lane of traffic so here's my crossing point and then there's a lane of traffic and another lane of traffic and another lane of traffic so i'm assuming it's looking further that way and it's also probably looking further left and right as well so it's trying to figure out where the best position is to stop that actually is a difficult thing right it's it's difficult to know exactly where to stop when you are trying to figure out like as you're learning to drive or something as you're doing that it's like where do you stop in order to make an appropriate left hand turn now i don't know if this is going to increase its ability to do something like turn with a yellow light so in most places it's kind of quasi legal whether you're allowed to do this but if you kind of creep out into the intersection and the light turns yellow in an unprotected light uh, turn situation you can then make a turn so i don't know if it'll improve that but certainly it sounds like it's at least going to allow the car to pull to a better position as it's waiting to make an unprotected left turn so again we'll have to see when i actually get the car uh, with the full self-driving update but i'll find out soon all right the next one is the really really big one in, in my mind in this update allow more room for longitudinal alignment during merges by incorporating modeling of merge region end i think that should be one l for modeling <laughs> anyway so so what does this mean so the problem that i think i and many many other people have is as you're entering a particular highway or something, but you'll get those merge lanes and what they do is they, you know, they eventually tail off and you have to merge over. But long before that, your car should be, you know, you don't wanna be there like with cars coming and you trying to merge in at the last possible second. That's very dangerous. So I think what they're saying here is that this is going to model where the end of the merge lane is. It's going to look ahead and it's going to go, oh. So you think of it as like a triangle. So you're here in your lane and there's a triangle and eventually that lane is going to end. And right now it doesn't really seem to pay attention to that. It's just like, oh, got to merge. <laughs> it just does it last second, which is dangerous. And it, it, it's kind of rude to the people around you. Hopefully what that means is that it's going to say like, oh, I have 500 meters to go or something before this lane ends. And so I better start getting over now. I think that's what it's saying 
thing. Now it does say longitudinal alignment, which is the long end of the car, not lateral alignment. So I, I maybe what that means is it's actually gonna rotate the car. It's gonna yaw the car around somewhat. So it's longitudinally aligned. So it starts to make the merge better. So anyway, I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I think what it's saying here is that it's going to do a better job merging. And that would be huge because that is a problem getting on the highway. Uh, or even getting onto just city streets that have merge lanes is just kind of crazy right now. It's very last minute and it's very scary to do in full self-driving. So that definitely is a needed update that should happen and it looks like it is happening. So again, we'll test this out when we get to full self-driving 10.6 drive, but that's very positive looking. And the last point, which also should actually be really, really nice, is improved comfort when offsetting for objects that are cutting out of your lane. So what I think that means again is your car is here, there's a car in front of you, you're following it, right? And oftentimes maybe they're slowing down or something, and then they move out of your lane, they merge out of your lane, they go into a different lane. What often happens is that the, the full self-driving beta and most cruise controls and things like that, if they're traffic aware cruise controls, they break really hard after the person is clearly out of the lane and moving out of the way. So you don't need to do that. So, you know, you get the person like this and you're coming up on them and they move out of the way and then you go, er, and you stop really fast and then you start back up again. And that's, it's annoying. It's somewhat dangerous because of course the person behind you could also get, you know, they could rear end you because you stopped in unexpected sort of manner. But more than that, it's just, you know, it's jerky. It's, that's why they say improved comfort. I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming that's what they're talking about here because that kind of jerking stopping motion and then starting back up again when it's unnecessary is really annoying. So I'm hoping that what that means is that it's just going to continue on. It's going to have a better understanding, a better prediction of how the other car is going to get out of your lane and understand that it can keep going without having to, you know, break and be kind of uncomfortable. All right, so there you go. That's a quick recap of what's new in version 10.6 of the beta software. Like I said, don't have it yet. I expect I'll probably get it tomorrow, maybe on Monday, at which point I will do a full self-driving test around town and we will see how it goes. But in the meantime, as always, it looks like there's a number of really nice improvements and it looks like there are improvements that are going to make material impact on our comfort and our confidence in this full self-driving. So that's really fantastic news. If you enjoyed this, please do like the video so other people can find it because YouTube's algorithm works that way. And of course, consider subscribing to this channel for more of that. As always, of course, a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. I really do appreciate everything. I appreciate the conversations, I appreciate the support, and I appreciate just the friendships that I'm developing with the people that I know on Patreon. So thank you all so much. And of course, if you wanna join the club, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in some awesome merch, check out the link in the description. We've got the TeslaBot t-shirt, which is super popular these days. Don't mess with Tesla. Lots of other t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, etc. So check out the link in the description and help the channel out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $2,300. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description and click on the link, you can see I was shopping for a power wall, a solar roof, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. And of course, as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is knows at gmail.com. Till next time. Bye-bye.